Hello everyone. I am your educator Bhavna Agarwal and today we'll be discussing about double circulation in humans. So I wonder whether you are aware of the structure of the human heart because if you have to know about double circulation if you want to understand what is double circulation you first need to understand what is the internal structure of the heart like. So let's have a look at the diagram here. This is somewhat a realistic picture of the human heart. And what is your heart and how big is it? It's just the size of your closed fist and it's located on the left side of your chest. It is enclosed by a rib cage which provides protection to it and it is the most vital organ of your body. So if you just have a look at the figure that's there on your screen, it's really difficult to understand what is there inside the heart. So for that purpose, I have brought a diagram that has been drawn by me, which I'll just be showing to you. But before we see that diagram, we all need to know that human heart is basically a four chambered heart. That means we have four chambers inside our heart and those four chambers, they are totally separated. The left and the right side, they're totally separated from each other by a muscular wall that divides the heart into two. And the upper and the lower chambers, they can communicate through the walls that are present in them. Again, these walls, they just provide a one-way movement to the blood. That means blood can flow only in one direction through the heart and it cannot flow in the reverse direction. So let us now have a look at the diagram. I have brought specially for you in this particular video. Now, if you look at this diagram, it's very, very clear. The first chamber, the second chamber, the third chamber and the fourth chamber. So in between these four chambers, it's a totally vertical wall that is separating the left side and the right side of the heart. And we call that wall the septum. So you can see the labeling here. This is the septum which divides the heart vertically into two. Uh, I should not use the word equal, but yes, two similar parts. The upper chambers, they are known as the atria or the atrium. Atrium is a singular word. If we have to uh, refer to it collectively, we can use the word atria, which is a plural. Atria are also known as auricles. So we can also say the left auricle and the right auricle. So we have the left auricle here and the right auricle here or the right atrium on that side. Now, this is my right hand. So when we label it, this will be the left side that is my the side which is on my right hand will be the left side of our diagram and the side which is on my left side will be the right side of the diagram. Another important point to remember is that the left side of the heart always deals only with oxygenated blood and the right side of the heart deals only with deoxygenated blood. That means there's a total separation of oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood in the heart. There's no way that these two can mix with each other. Now, how does the blood flow through the heart? The superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, these are the largest veins of our body. They are bringing in the deoxygenated blood from all over our body to the right atrium. That means the right atrium receives the deoxygenated from, from, uh, blood from all the body parts uh, through the superior and the inferior vena cava. And from here, that deoxygenated blood is pumped to the right ventricle through this valve, which is known as the tricuspid valve. Why do we use the word tricuspid here? Because as you can see, there are three cusps here. These are known as the cusps. So these are just like hanging like this. So once the blood can go down, when the ventricle contracts, the blood cannot come up because these uh, cusps, they fold back and they close the valve. So... Once the blood reaches the right ventricle, remember this is the deoxygenated blood and when the right ventricle contracts, this blood travels up through the uh, Y-shaped blood vessel that you can see over here. We call it the pulmonary artery and it's transferred to the lungs. So the blood from here is transported to the lungs where the blood gives off its carbon dioxide and takes some fresh oxygen and gets oxygenated and then it again comes back to the heart through this set of vessels here which are known as the pulmonary veins. 
normally when we refer to this we say the arteries are those vessels which carry blood from the or we can say the arteries are those vessels which carry oxygenated blood and the veins are those uh, vessels which carry deoxygenated blood but over here you can see the difference that artery is carrying the deoxygenated blood and the veins are carrying the oxygenated blood so there's a new uh, definition to be remembered over here arteries are those vessels which carry blood away from the heart to the other organs and veins are those vessels which bring the blood from other organs back to the heart so we don't go with oxygenated and deoxygenated here now this blood has reached the left atrium when the left atrium contracts now this is the oxygenated blood now through this valve that is the bicuspid valve why do we use the word bicuspid here because as you can see there are two cusps here the blood reaches the left ventricle and when the left ventricle contracts then what happens the blood goes up through this question mark shaped blood vessel which is also known as the aorta and it's transferred to the whole body for distribution so aorta is the largest artery of our body and the vena cava they are the largest veins of our body so i hope this diagram will help you understand the flow of blood through the heart now the point to be remembered here is that we have observed that in one cycle blood is flowing twice through the heart first it flowed through the right side in the form of deoxygenated blood and next it flowed through the left side in the form of oxygenated blood so this shows that in one complete cycle blood is flowing twice through the heart we can represent this with the help of the flow chart as shown here so this flow chart shows that the heart has four chambers from the body tissues the vena cava bring the deoxygenated blood to the heart then that deoxygenated blood travels through the pulmonary artery to the lungs where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place the same blood gets oxygenated and then again comes back to the heart through the pulmonary veins and again from the aorta it is transported back to the body for distribution so there are two complete cycles here which are involved the upper one which involves the lungs we call it the pulmonary circulation and the lower one which involves the body tissues is known as the systemic circulation so in all there are two cycles operating at the same time and that is why we use the term double circulation so how do we define double circulation the flow the blood flows twice through the heart in one complete cycle and that is the reason why we call it as double circulation so i hope the concept is clear to everyone thanks for joining me